So given that my channel is called Black Belt Secrets, today here is the secret behind your song. Ours is not going to be as dark as your average takeaway or restaurant because we don't use as much dark soy sauce that gives it that very dark color, but it is just as delicious, if not more so, so here we go. You can use pork, lamb or beef mince depending on your dietary preferences or restrictions. Just make sure you get good quality meat and drain all of the liquid off. Again somewhat optional, we used a full pack of bacon and chopped it up finely just because we had it there to use up and it adds to the flavour. Next you're going to get some carrots and make sure you take all the peel off. Just to give you an idea for this fairly large dish we literally used two mushrooms and two reasonably sized carrots. Now we're going to chop them up really finely, so take the ends off. You're going to chop them first lengthways, turn them sideways again and chop them really finely so that you get tiny little chunks like so. This really is important because Yoksong is literally mixed meat and vegetables, so you're going to mix in the meat with the vegetables, so by doing them in really tiny chunks you get some of the flavour of all of the vegetables, all of the meat, all at once. This is why we do this with the vegetables and then they mix in with any of the flavour. So set these carrots aside and we're going to do exactly the same with the mushrooms. So you're going to do the mushrooms lengthways and nice and long, turn them sideways, turn them sideways again. So you're chopping them several times to pretty much dice them really, really finely and tiny, just like this. Make sure you look for any bits that haven't quite been chopped. Chop those separately and you can even do one more chop through them just to make sure they are really tiny because these really add to the texture of the yuk song. The carrots give you a slight crunch, the mushrooms take on all the flavour so you get a variety. Next you're going to take a can of water chestnuts, these kingfisher ones are quite nice. Open up the can, you're going to take this over to rinse and wash out, although sometimes admittedly these cans don't always go to plan. But eventually they came out without cutting my fingers and we're going to run them under a cold tap just to swirl them off nicely before we get to chopping them to go with the rest of the ingredients. And by the way my chilli plants are doing really nicely, I've got lots of chilies on there now and some of them are turning red too. But back to the chopping and you need to chop these individually so you'll need to go through the same process. Chop them one way, turn them, chop them again and you're going to chop them in really fine chunky dices because these offer up a watery crunch obviously watery chestnuts they offer a watery crunch to go with your carrot crunch and to go with your mushroom tasty dices all mixed in with the meat and the juices and the flavors that you put in eventually so these take a little bit more time but it is really worth it so go with the water chestnuts in your yolk zone and it will improve the dish no end so chop these all up mix these all in and then we're ready to move on to the next step this is an optional mid-cooking session step, but why not? It's a Saturday night, right? So on the subject of good quality ingredients, these are the minimum you're going to need. A good white pepper, rice wine, chicken powder, a good quality soy sauce, your mincemeat, your bacon we talked about earlier as an extra, and the vegetables, and of course more wine. A good quality egg or two also helps the mixture as it does with any burger. So hop to that with the egg, we'll go in first. We're going to have a sprinkle of the white pepper going in, a good dash of the good quality soy sauce, a spoon of chicken powder, and mixing a cap of the rice wine. Now mixing this all together has to be mixed very well. So it's going to take some time because the ingredients will gradually mix into the meat and soften it up so that it will move around because you don't want any lumps sticking together because then that won't take on as much flavour. So have patience with this, take your time mixing around. We use chopsticks because it just works so much better. Probably the last ingredients you're going to need are a couple of spring onions, a bit of ginger and a bit of garlic. Now just like all of the other ingredients we're going to chop them up really finely including the ginger which I'm not normally a fan of but uh, it goes into everything and it flavours everything up so let's put it in there. So we're going to chop the ginger up just as well, we're going to chop the spring onion up and with the garlic as well this needs to be chopped up just as finely and you'll see how we're going to use these together in just a moment. So now that we've got all the ingredients prepared, the first thing we're actually going to cook is the bacon. Get the pan on because it's going to smell up the place. A little bit of groundnut oil, you don't need much because bacon's got a lot of fat in it by itself. 
Bacon goes in there. Again, this is going to take patience to make sure none of it is stuck together. A bit of black pepper going in there. And you're just going to slowly turn this around because you want it to cook all the way through, but you don't want it to burn. And we want it cooked in individual slices like this because we want the edges to be crisping up as well. But again, you need to make sure none of them stick together so they all cook through thoroughly and keep it moving and just have a little patience with it. So it will take a little time, but the first thing you'll see is the fat start to come out of it. That will tell you it's almost done. So as you're moving around, just watch for that coming out. So once it's turned golden brown, take it into a sieve spoon or a skimmer and take the oil or the fat out. Leave the fat in the pan. It's important, I'll tell you why in a minute. So we're going to take this bacon out. So gradually, again, take your patience, do it properly. Push all the bacon into the sieve spoon to get the fat out. And now we're going to get the fat back on the heat. Now that you've got lovely bacon there, you're going to get the fat back on the heat and pinch a bit or two of bacon. If you have used bacon, save some of this bacon fat and I'll tell you why in a moment. Now again, gradually on a low heat you're going to heat up this fat. You don't want it burning, but you do want to heat it up. So with the fat just about ready, in goes the meat and again patience is key. You're going to make sure everything is in there and mix it up gradually and slowly and make sure that it's cooked all the way through, that it keeps separated, lumps don't stick together. You want a nice grainy texture all the way through, making sure that it is done all the way through. So have some patience and this will pay off. When you're satisfied with that, it's time to mix it in with the bacon that we prepared earlier. And now comes in that little bit of extra fat that we had, but any other oil will do. This goes back in the pan, again on a gentle heat. Now in with a little bit more oil, and here we go with those ingredients I told you about earlier. So we're going to take the ginger and the garlic in first of all. Uh, not the spring onion just yet because that heats up a little too quickly. We're getting the ginger and the garlic going to get the flavour in the pan. The idea being the flavour comes out of the garlic and the ginger and goes into the vegetables. So you're going to mix these around a little bit of salt and pepper as you go and take your time, mix them around so that they really soak up that flavour. When those are ready you're going to put your meat mixture back into the vegetables. And here we're going to put in a few more ingredients which will bring it right up to flavour for Yuxong. A good quality soy sauce splash in there, another cap of rice wine going in, oyster sauce which really brings out the flavour of Yuxong going in there, a uh, little drizzle of sesame oil, not too much or it will overpower it. And then gradually mix all of that in, taking this opportunity to make sure that there's no lumps of meat stuck together again. Finally is your spring onion because that would otherwise burn and disintegrate. So final touches, mixing that in nicely. It should all be cooked through by now and ready to eat. So we always serve this up in a nice bowl so we can take as much as we want. You can equally serve it up with some rice, which is delicious. And you can always serve it up in a lettuce like they do in a restaurant. This one is a romaine lettuce, which works just as well. Ultimately, it goes perfectly with any dish. If you found this video useful, please like the video because YouTube apparently likes that. And also subscribe if you want to come back and watch how to make crab and sweet corn soup like you get from the takeaway, which is absolutely delicious. Many more dishes to come because I've become quite the cooking enthusiast. See you next time and thanks for watching.